I'm Terry Neal. I work for the Commonwealth of Learning. Uh, we work uh, across 49 developing countries in the Commonwealth, uh, and our focus is increasing access to education and training with the use of open and distance learning and technologies. My role there is uh, I'm responsible for the technical and vocational skills development work that we do. In terms of why I'm here, uh, at one level because uh, the Commonwealth of Learning was invited to send a representative, uh, so I'm doing that because of my skills focus. Um, I'm here to learn and contribute and also we would really like to explore how we might work with the sailor uh, in some way as well. Okay, well I think at one level everything that we do is focused on addressing the skills gap. Uh, we, um, we have a number of initiatives, so um, I talked about three this morning, Lifelong Learning for Farmers and uh, Girls Inspire and Skills in Demand, which are uh, two of which are very focused at grassroots level people and informal skills development. Uh, then the skills in demand is looking at formal qualifications, but again, targeting marginalised people. And I think that's across all of our work. We're really looking at marginalised people and how to give them skills rather than um, people that sort of would be fine anyway. Um, and, but we also have an open schooling initiative, a universities initiative, a teacher training initiative, um, and we, also, we have a virtual university which is across the small states of the Commonwealth. So we, we, we have many strands of work, but the common theme would be that open and distance learning and technology are, um, are solving the challenges facing these developing countries in skills development. Absolutely, and they range from uh, Nauru in the Pacific, which is one island and 10,000 people, a whole country, uh, through to India, you know, the most populous uh, country in the world, so, and everything in between. So, uh, and, and because of those differences, they face very different challenges, and the potential for open and distance learning and technology to solve those challenges is quite different. You know, for some it's about scale, for others it's about dealing with tiny numbers and particularly in the Pacific and the Caribbean distributed populations with big chunks of water in between. So um, yes, we, we can't have one model for all of them. Uh, so we, we are looking at models and then with those kind of guiding principles we then look at replicating and scaling those once we've proven them in one place. So like with the Lifelong Learning for Farmers, that was um, developed in India and then has been spread to Africa and is now being uh, piloted in the Pacific, but the specifics for that would be quite different. Uh, yeah, but I think um, what we also have is um, now 30 years of history where we have uh, not just tested and tried to get these things happening but have a, a, an approach of evaluation and gathering evidence about the effectiveness of those things so we can share those stories with the rest of the world too. So one of the things that uh, I've been reflecting on over the the time so far um, at the summit is that there's quite an emphasis on higher education and university and degrees and my personal passion around closing the global skills gap is recognizing the value of TVET. I think it's often seen as the poor relation uh, and if you if you think about the kind of the triangle of the world's population you know higher education is this bit and this bit is where the, the TVET sector sits. And so the more people, the deeper down you can go, you start to get into the really large numbers of people. 
and you start to really transform more people's lives and uh, transform economies, and particularly many of the countries that we work in, that's what can take them from a low uh, performing economy to a middle level and eventually, hopefully, to a high level economy. So it's both the numbers of people that you uh, can change the lives of, but also um, the technical skills that you can contribute to these economies in this country. Because we're not just trying to give people skills for skills sake, we're actually trying to give people skills to improve their lives and to improve their countries.